Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop video, I'll be showing you how to do a Photoshop battle picture. In this case, taking this picture of this cat here and adding it in over here as a member of this band. If you enjoy this Photoshop battle video, make sure you hit that like button and of course click on share as well. And also subscribe if you haven't already done so. It helps support my channel through Patreon, and there's a link on the channel homepage. Okay, let's get to it. If you haven't heard of Photoshop battles before, this is something which has been going on for several years over on Reddit. It's a subreddit called Photoshop Battles. Let me just bring that up here. There it is, and the link up here is reddit.com slash r slash Photoshop Battles, right there. And this is a group or a subreddit. It's been around, like I said, for I believe about seven years at this point. And what they do is people post up all kinds of different pictures that they find interesting or amusing, and then people see what they can do with those pictures. Out of this big long list here, they will pick one picture a week and use that for the current battle. And right now that's this paper dragon picture over here. So you'll find some really great stuff on this. Let me just show you this very quickly. I'll right click on this open in a new link. And this is the current battle going on. Let's just scroll down just a bit here and look at a few of these examples. We'll just come on down here. King Gator versus Godzilla is a pretty good one. Open that up as a separate link. And here we go. There is that picture right there added into this whole Photoshop image. This is a great one. I think this actually should win. That's my personal opinion. I like that one a lot. But other stuff, things that you would expect, like this one up here. There's that dragon there attacking a castle. You know, nothing really unusual on that one. It's done fairly well. This is mine kind of like as well. Open this up. So you can see all kinds of really interesting and very creative uses of the original picture right over there. Let's just close this down. There we are. Now for this video demo, what I did was I looked through here and just found something which I liked. It isn't one of the current battles going on, but I like the shot. And let's just see how this is done. I'll click on Next. There's a whole bunch more of these. Now, the way this works for the actual battle, like we have up here, is the person who wins last week's battle goes through here and picks up the picture that they want to use for the next battle. So, previous winner picks the next picture, and then the battle starts on that. But there's lots of pictures in here. As you can see, all kinds of interesting stuff. And I think the one I used here is on the next page. It's only been up for a couple of days. There it is, right there. The swaying cat. Let's just bring this one up. And there's that picture. I'll give you a link for this up here if you want to work along with this project. So there we go. There's our battle. If you take a look at the comments right here, open this up. Here is this image. People are doing this image. It hasn't been chosen as a battle, but people are doing the image anyway. If I set this at new, mine is pretty close here to the top. There it is, right down there. Only one point so far. That's just my putting it up. To give somebody a point, you click on that little PS sign on the left-hand side to vote and add points onto that. So this is my choice right there, my little addition to that. Kind of fun. So there we go. That's what the Photoshop battle is all about. And let's get this out of the way. Now, most of these I've seen are not really that great as far as the quality goes. I think they should be. I think people should really learn how to use Photoshop and put that quality into their images. If you're going to do it, go ahead and do it right. That's my thinking. In any case, let's make a fun little bit here of adding something into another picture. This could be a different person, whatever you want over here, but we'll use this kind of a strange cat. Now I have links for this background picture, a link for the trumpet right there, and of course the link for this. You'll find all of that. There's one link in the description for all these different project files. You'll find that down there, including my finished Photoshop file over here. One more thing about these Photoshop battles is that you don't have to use Photoshop to do it. All they care about is the final image. Any program you use is good enough. I mean, I could have done this over in a lot of different programs. I could have done this easily in Photoshop Elements. This can be done in GIMP. You know, whatever. It's the final image that they're really caring about. But we'll take a look at this in this Photoshop video. Okay, so let's close this image down. There we go. We'll be using this picture right here, and again, a couple more over here. 
Here's the trumpet picture. There it is. Use this one left hand side and also let's get that concert picture in there which is right there. So there's the background picture for this whole project and here's the trumpet and here is the cat picture. Now the first thing we need to do is to get the elements all into one file. We'll just place everything over into that background picture. I'm going to take the background picture and let's just minimize that for a minute. So here's the cat and let's make this pretty good size here. So we need to get the cat out of here and over there. We'll do the background removal in here as a new layer and then just drag and drop that layer over to the background file. So we'll zoom in a little bit here, a couple of clicks. That's pretty good. And we'll use the select and mask. So select, select and mask. And going to the tools, left hand side, the top one up here is the quick selection tool. And we'll start off with that, just a real fast quick selection here. This goes pretty quickly because there's good separation between the cat and the background, luckily enough. Now it doesn't get those whiskers. I'm not going to care about the whiskers in this picture. For the Photoshop battle, little super small details like that aren't as critical. And those are very hard to actually pull in. What I would do if I wanted to keep these whiskers in is just do real careful work in here and put those in as a secondary pass on everything or just draw them in by hand, which you can also do very easily. But everything else will be in here just fine. Let's go ahead and finish our selection. Now down below, this catches a little bit of the floor down here. And as you can see, we're catching a little bit of the, of the bit in here on the toes. So let's go ahead and fix those and a little bit over here as well. I'm going to switch down here to the regular paint tool. This is our brush tool. And I'll just paint this in. Let me just switch that to minus. There we are. That's better. And I'll paint this in close to the fur. Just kind of fill that in like that. So I'm removing that from the selection. Let's just reverse this to the plus and use it to catch those little spots in the toes. There we go. Okay, a little bit right here. We can remove that. Let's just switch over here to the negative sign and just remove that. Okay, to clean this up, let's now go up here to the Refine Edge tool. I have one set at 54 pixels, which is okay. I'm just going to paint right down along the edge and all that Photoshop clean the edge up as much as possible. Not too good down there. Let's see if we can improve that. There it is. And just work along the edge. And this just cleans up the fur. Gives it a little better quality on the fur. A little hard to get that bottom spot. Let me just re-shift this position here. There we go. And get that. And a little smaller on the brush. Sometimes with this tool you have to go back and forth just a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. And then back to our plus and back to about the 54 pixels, which seem to work out well for this picture. And I'll just continue going along the edge and just cleaning up those little hairs. Now I move the whole picture, hold the space bar down. You can then drag the picture like that. Notice how I have the plus sign out here in the red. That seems to be working out well for me here. And just a real fast pass along the edge. I'm getting a little bit of those whiskers in there, which is good. Not the whole whisker, but that helps. It gets a bit. Ears are fine already. It's not even going to bother up along there. And just work along here and clean up that edge. It came in a bit too much down here, so hit the negative and then click in there. And there we go. That takes care of that pass. We can now fit screen and there's the whole mask. Okay, let's output this down here on the right hand side towards the bottom. New layer with layer mask and choose OK. And there's a mask. A few little spots in here can be cleaned up on this mask. Obviously, I'll just zoom in just a bit. And on the layer mask side, look for that outline, that white outline. Black hides, so here's my black paintbrush. There it is, and then just paint over those spots that need a little bit of cleanup. You don't have to go clear in, leave that alone, but anything that's out of it further in here, we can clean that out. Like some of these little lines right there can come out. And then right down along there, and along there. These are just lines that were in the 
floor. And we don't need to have those. Easier to clean up on the layer mass. Let's just look at this side. Just a few over in here that need a little bit of cleanup. Not much. Anything that's really thin in here is going to disappear. It'll be hidden by the background of the final image anyway. So let's just finish off our quick pass. And that looks good. Okay, so there is our new layer with layer mask. We can now bring back up the original image. Let's go over here to Window, and it's right down here at Concert. There it is. There's that picture. Let's go over to this and simply drag this layer here over onto the Concert picture, and that brings the cat in, including that layer mask. So the cat is now in here as part of this picture. It's a bit too large, as you can see. Let's go ahead and quickly fix that. I'll hold the Control T keyboard shortcut down, get our Control handles. Hold the Shift key down, and drag in from a corner, and let's just get a rough approximation of the right size in here. So I want it in here behind that guitarist. So these feet should be up in front of, or you know, further up than this foot or that foot. So just a little, there's a little bit in behind like that, and about the same height as that guitarist. And that looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit smaller. So right there is good on that one and then hit that check mark to set that in place. Okay, so far so good. Let's now go over to our trumpet. We don't need this any longer. I'll close that one down. No need to save that. We're done with that one. Here's the trumpet. We want just this one left side trumpet. So I'll grab the polygonal lasso tool and I'll do a real fast lasso around this. Now this is a PNG file that already has transparency in the background, which makes this job a lot easier. All I need is, is to have this on its own layer. Let me just redo that. I missed that edge there. So we'll come around here. There we go. And right back to the beginning. There's our selection. Go up to Layer and New, and then Layer via Copy. And that copy is just that selected piece onto a new layer up there. And just like the cat, grab that layer and drag it over here. And there's a trumpet inside of that picture. Okay, we can close that one down. We're done with that as well. Now, all of our elements are inside of this image. This work on this one will bring the size down. So the Control T keyboard shortcut, bring the control handles up and hold the Shift key down and pull the trumpet down to about the right size. That's close. Come just outside a corner here. And we can rotate this around, get it at the right angle. Put it right about, right about like that. That's actually pretty good. It's a little bit too large. Maybe about in here someplace. And I think that looks pretty good. So there is the cat playing that trumpet. And again, check mark. And that piece now is in place. So all the elements are in place and they're in position. Now we need to get the stacking correct on them. Now there, this leg here should be in front of this leg and tail of the cat. So we need to bring this to the foreground. And this part of the guitar neck and this guitarist's hand need to be in front of this picture as well. So we need to have those two pieces copied out of this background layer. And again, go back to the polygonal lasso tool. And I'll just do a big lasso around this and back to the start and I'll click on the second button here which is add T selection and let's get that bit of a leg right here and come down to the start so I have these two selections let's now make a new layer of that so layer new layer via copy there it is if you want to, we can rename this one. I'll just call this one hand leg and drag it above everything else. Now they're in front. That's good. Now this layer, this is the trumpet. And of course this layer is the cat. The next thing we need to do is to do a layer mask on the hand leg, masking out everything that we don't need 
And same thing for the leg, everything we don't need on this one. We'll come down, we'll do the leg part first. We'll just zoom in on the leg down here. Maybe back out just a little bit on that. There we go. There's that top of that piece and the bottom of that piece. It's right in this area here. Let's do a little temporary trick here to make it easier to see this piece. And that's put a layer in here, layer, and then new adjustment layer, levels. Where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, choose that and choose OK. And this just lighten that up a bit like that. There we are. Now you can see where the edges of that piece are very easily. We'll get rid of this layer once we no longer need it. Now we can make a layer mask on this layer. So here's our layer. Add a new layer mask to the layer and then using the polygonal lasso tool or any tool you like actually is fine. I'll just make a quick selection right along this edge of the leg now this would be where the cat is going to be showing right in behind the leg. And let's follow clear down. We'll do one side at a time. The more time you spend here, the more careful you are with this, the better the effect will be. I'll do this fairly quickly here and not try to be perfect for this video. And just work on down the pants and out and around that piece and back to the beginning, which is right there. Now, black hides, white shows. I want to hide this piece of this overall leg bit in here. So we want the black brush already on that. So let's be paint in here and fill this in with black over that whole range. And there we go. And then go ahead and deselect. Let's now do the same thing on the left side of the leg here. Again, the polygonal lasso tool and just follow right along the edge of the pants right here and make a nice little selection. Now with this tool, make sure you don't click too quickly. If you click too quickly, it's going to collapse the selection and you'll have to start over again. So take your time and just keep your breathing nice and regular. This is kind of a zen mode I try to get into when I'm using this particular tool so I don't mess things up. And work clear around the edge till you're past that piece in and outside and then back to the beginning again which is right there. And then again just paint that out with black on the layer mask. And then deselect. And that takes care of that. We'll leave this layer adjustment on here just temporarily and let's take a look at the top side up here. There we go. That's why I left that on so we can see this next bit in here. Same thing. We'll do the top half first and then the bottom half. So plug on a lasso tool. We're still on that layer. We're still on the layer mask. And let's just come in and make a nice selection along here. This is a little bit trickier just because there's some more detail in here that wasn't on the pant leg. So again, take your time with this tool and make a nice selection. You can kind of see there's a bit of a fuzzy edge in there. I'm trying to be right in the middle of that fuzzy edge for the best effect. The nice thing about doing this on a layer mask is I can always go back in and adjust this later, you know, zoom way in and make it absolutely perfect. But for this pass, I don't need to do that. Okay, up around the edge of this bit, and we're outside the cat, and back around to the start, which is right there. And same thing using black paint on the layer mask to paint out that bit right there. Okay, deselect and the last part down below. And here we go. Just work right along here. It's kind of a bracelet thing right there. And then around the hand. And once this done, that will take care of the 
foreground figure being in front of the cat. We'll then work on that cat paw that should be overlapping the trumpet. Same basic concept there as we're doing down here. Okay, just about got this one done. And then work back along the neck of the guitar right here. Once that comes out, a little bit of a thickness right in there. And out here. And then around this. I think at this point we're actually past the cat's fur. But I'll take it out about that far. And then out and around. And back to the start, which is right there. Same thing. Paintbrush and paint that out with black on the paintbrush. And then deselect. Let's see how it looks. Just hide that adjustment layer. And that looks fine. There we go. Okay, that's done. You can delete that adjustment layer if you want to. We no longer need that. Just hit the trash can. And that's out of the way. Okay, next little bit, I want to take this paw here and put this in front of the trumpet. So let's zoom into that just a little bit further here. That's close enough. And let's come down to the trumpet line right here. We'll need a layer mask on the trumpet line to hide this bit of the trumpet. So a layer mask right there. Let's now hide that layer and grab the polygonal lasso tool and let's do a quick lasso right around that one cat paw. And again, exactly the same trick that we we're doing with the guy's hand right down below. And let's come back around. That's far enough. Bring the trumpet up again. Grab that black paintbrush. Make sure you're on the layer mask. And then just paint over that. And that puts that paw in front instead of behind. And then deselect. Okay, that takes care of the overlapping sections. Let's now set this back to fit screen. There we go. So the cat is now properly in behind this foreground guitarist and we have the hands in the right position on the trumpet on the cat. Two basic things left to do but there are a few steps involved. One is to put in the shadows at the base of the cat. Now there are three shadows to worry about. There's a little thin dark shadow. You can see it right there under this one shoe. You can see it over again here. Just a little thin dark shadow right underneath. So we'll have to have that under those two bits. There's this light shadow in here actually just shadowing out the magenta color right there and then there's a darker shadow right in the foreground right up here so three basic shadows and then the coloration of the cat see there's a lot of magenta hitting the right hand side of the guitarist right here and then we have these blue lights in the background so we want to have magenta on the right hand side and blue on the left hand side Let's do our colorization first on this. So for that, I want to have a new layer above the cat layer. Here's the cat layer. Let's make a new layer above this, new layer button right here. And let's grab the gradient tool. Now I have mine already set at the proper gradient up here. As you can see, click on that gradient. Here's the gradient editor. Now for this, I'm going to set everything back to the default. So let's just go like that. Here's the basic setup on this. We need to have the blue left-hand side. So click on this left side color stop right here. Click where it says color. And that gives you an eyedropper. And then find a nice blue up in here someplace. When you click on it, you'll see the blue showing up in here. Now it's pretty close to that blue color. I want to have it a stronger color, so I'll move that clear over here to the right side. And just a little bit darker. Something kind of like that's pretty good. And choose OK. Right hand side, same trick. Click on the right hand side color stop. Click where it says color. 
and then come in and grab a nice bright magenta someplace. Looks like right in here is a pretty good one right there. That's good. And I'll come into a stronger magenta color over here. We can always lighten the color down a little bit. So there's that magenta color. And then choose OK. Right there and right there. So there's our gradient. Now if I do a little quick bit like that, there's your basic gradient. Now it's showing on top of everything. So right click where it says layer one and choose create clipping mask and that puts it inside of the cat right there. So you can really see your gradient right now. Let's just play around with this till we get just the right amount of gradient. I want to have more magenta in here than blue. That's pretty good right there. Now we need to blend this into the cat. We're changing the color only, so let's change the blend mode down here to color. And there's the cat colorized, but it's coloring the eyes up here. We can use a different way to colorize this cat by using a different blend mode, and that's the overlay. This will retain a lot of the cat's color, as you can see, and then just adds this color into that cat. So there's a coloration for the cat. Now at this point you can still work with the color in here if you want. You can still pull that across and change the coloration. It will still work. Let me just demonstrate that. I'll do that. There we go. So I can still come in here and modify this if I want to. And I think that looks pretty good right there. If it's too strong, just bring the opacity down a little bit on this. That's our opacity up here. And you can back it down a little bit and that will help to blend the cat in. So we have the coloration on the cat, but it's not so much that we lose that effect of it being a white cat in light color. So I just brought the opacity down to about 68%. So there's the colorization for the cat. This we also still have our whiskers in this. So those came in just fine on the original mask down here, layer mask. Let's now do the shadows. I'll do the most difficult shadow first. That's the one coming forward. There we go. And for this, I'm going to zoom out a bit with the Alt key down. We'll zoom back a bit like that. You'll see why in just a minute. That's pretty good. I'll just dock that up there. Okay, for this, take the cat layer, make a duplicate of this layer. When you do that, we lose the clipping mask on this color layer. So just right click on that layer and set that back in again. There's the clipping mask again, so that's fine. And then we'll use this layer here for the shadow. I'm going to double click here and call this one cat shadow. There it is. Let's flip this layer, a vertical flip. So go up to edit, come down to transform and flip vertical. There's our flipped cat. Notice how the cat here is in white. That's because of course it is not part of this clipping mask on that color. Okay, now bring the cat down and place one paw underneath the other paw right there. Now this paw is off down here, so we need to skew this image up to match that foot. So edit, transform, and skew, and then grab this left side control handle and pull that up until that foot matches. So the right foot matches, a little adjustment on that one. So a good match there, a good match on the left hand side using that skew option. Okay, that's fine. Now we need to convert this into a shadow effect. For that we'll use another adjustment layer, layer, new adjustment layer, levels. Again use the checkbox right there, choose OK. Take the dark side and move this all the way over here to the right hand side. Just really darken that down so it becomes a shadow effect as opposed to being just a picture of the cat. We can close that down. Now we need to modify a couple of things here. I want to have this fading out towards the bottom and we can do that right here on the shadow. Now white shows black hide, so I want to have more black down here. 
And to do this really well, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit further. And we can come in here and using the black paintbrush again, soft brush, I'll bring the size up quite a ways here. Like that. And then it's kind of come in here and we're going to thin this down. Layer mask side. Just like that. So I'm painting black on the layer mask side, but real soft. And that just fades that up. There we go. So that is now faded in nicely. And let's zoom back in a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. Let's blend this into the background of the picture by using the modes again up here and use the overlay. That just blends it into the picture right there. There we go, nice little shadow. Now it's not quite as dark as I would like. So we'll duplicate these two layers in here, this layer and this layer. I'll do the bottom layer first. There it is. And let's duplicate the second layer. There we go and then put those stacked just like that and then right click on the name for the layer mask and create clipping mask and same thing on this one right click on the name for the layer mask and create clipping mask and that puts it just inside that one okay now it's too strong at this point so let's bring the opacity of the top of these two layers down a bit and this allows us to blend that in exactly the amount we want for a good match. And I think someplace in there is looking pretty good. So there's our foreground shadow on that. Now there's a little bit coming in here over this pant leg. Let's see if we can find that spot. I'm going to show or hide this cat. Let's show or hide this cat. It's right there. It's going to be on the layer mask. So we need to hide, so we need black over this little bit. I'll do this one real fast. The best way to do this, of course, is to take your time and come in here and do a nice, careful edge using the polygonal lasso tool. Let's just brush this one in. And I'll set this down to a pretty small size. And I'll put it about halfway on the hardness. That's pretty good. Color is black, black hides. I'm on the layer mask. And let's just carefully paint that out right in there and that just shows that foot again as it should be there we are okay back to fit on screen that's the foreground shadow that's the main shadow that you see that's one from these back lights in here now we need to have a another shadow you can see right in there Pretty thin shadow is just lightening or changing the color really. Going back to the left hand side and it, it fades out, it just kind of disappears back in there. So we can handle that one pretty easily. We have our black paintbrush still. Let's make a new layer, make it above these two layers. This layer adjustment layer and these two shadow layers. So up right here, right below the cat layer, make a new layer right there. And there's our black, there's our paintbrush. Let's bring the paintbrush size up a little bit. I'll use the right square bracket to bring that brush size up. And then I'm just going to pull a streak just like that, pull a streak like that, and a little bit in there. So just a couple of streaks straight back. We'll get rid of this stuff back in here. We can do that with the eraser easily enough. You know, any tool is fine on this. But I'll use the eraser tool and let's bring our brush size back up to about, I'll put it to the 400 again. That's pretty good for this picture. And let's just come in and soften that up like that. There we go. And then let's blend this into the background. Again, changing the blend mode here. For this one, the hue works out quite well. As you can see, it's almost an exact match because all we're doing is we're hiding that color back in there and showing in that black color. So that's pretty good. It's a little bit too strong still. Let's just bring the opacity down a bit on that. That's actually pretty good right there, 66. And that is a good match for what we have going on down here. So there's that little 
shadow happening. Last one we need is just a real thin shadow right underneath the feet, real small. So there's a new layer right here. And let's zoom in on this. There we are. And let's grab that paintbrush again. And just make it a bit smaller than that. And then just right along the edge, just like that. Just a little bit of a dark edge in there. And then bring the opacity down on that just a bit to help blend that in. Doesn't need very much in here, just a little bit of a darker spot right under that edge. And there we go. Okay, fit on screen. Last thing we need to do is, because we've added the cat in over here on the right-hand side, it's messed up the overall composition. Picture is now too heavy on the right-hand side. Where it was centered on these guys, it's now pushed off to the right-hand side. So let's change the cropping on this picture. Grab the crop tool. I have mine set here at square. It's a standard format for Instagram. And let's just move the picture around a little bit. And I think right about there looks pretty good. And choose OK. And there it is. So there is our finished picture. Bringing this cat in from that Photoshop Battles site and placing it into this picture back in there. So there you go. That's how you can have fun with those Photoshop Battles. There's some great ideas in there for just some real creativity. and. This is the approach on pretty much all of those things. It's going to be adding elements into another picture or taking elements out of a picture. So it uses the standard tools for adding and removing or changing backgrounds on a picture. So there we go. Little demo on how to do a Photoshop battle. Now if you had fun with this Photoshop battle video, make sure you click that like button and also click that share button as well. Don't forget to subscribe and also support my channel through Patreon, and you'll find a link for that on the channel homepage.